they look at Trump as a vampire and they put a stake in his heart, but they're afraid that that stake could come out any time, that he's undying and they're afraid of him. They are <laughs> terrified of him. You know why they're terrified of him? Because they think he's smarter this time and he has just caused to really get angry because of what they did to him. They can write all of the Atlantic Monthly and they can write all of the New Yorker clever glib little essays about Donald Trump was a threat to democracy or they can write all their little Molly Ball time essays, how clever and brilliant they were with their cabals and their conspiracies to get rid of them. But deep down inside, they know that if the right ever did that to Barack Obama or Joe Biden, they could have really made something out of the fact that Barack Obama had a hot mic expose where he told the president of Russia, you tell Vladimir that I will be flexible on missile defense. That's the security of the United States of America if he gives me space in my last election. And Putin did do that. That's an impeachable offense if a phone call to Ukraine is. So they understand that, that the right could have done that to them. And they understand now the right probably will do that to them for their own survival. And they are scared. They're yes. saying if, if a MAGA candidate wins and they win the House and the Senate, we're cooked because they're going to get special prosecutors and they're going to go after the Biden family like they've never gone after anybody. And they're going to find stuff because we know Joe is crooked. And then they're going to go after Mary Garland and they're going to go after Mayorkas and they're not going to stop. And that's why they're scared. And they're going to do any, everybody thinks that the danger passed. They got what they wanted. No, 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 no. You're never going to yeah. see anything like what they're going to do in 2024. All of this could have been reconciled. All they had to do was say Donald Trump should not be president if that's what they believe. And we're not going to do any lawfare. We're not going to try to change the voting laws. We're not going to pack the court. We're not going to let in two states. We're not going to try to abolish the Senate filibuster. We're not going to try to change the uh, voting ID laws. We're just going to play under, under the rules that we have. We don't need $419 million by Mark Zuckerberg infused. We don't need Sam Bankman fried the crook giving us $100 million. We're not going to go under the radar with George. So we're just going to show you, the American people, how we think Donald Trump should not be president and we'll have a feral and they can't do that they don't trust themselves they think you know what anybody in his right mind would close that border right now close the border anybody in his right mind would recall all of those da's that have destroyed these major cities anybody in his right mind would not beg the saudis or the venezuelans are the Russians, are the Iranians to pump oil on the eve of a midterm or drain their strategic petroleum when you have so much natural gas and oil? And, you know, nobody in their right mind would do that. And nobody in their right mind would ever just pull out of Afghanistan without warning, just so Joe Biden can say that on the 20th anniversary of 9-11 or the original October uh, invasion of Afghan. I'm the president that got us out. Nobody would do that. And nobody would print $6 trillion when there's a pent up demand post COVID lockdown and there's a supply chain disruption and throw that money without any audit or ex examination of who got it and why and how it was spent, but to inflate the economy and ruin it. Nobody would do that. And so they know that. And they know that they can't take that record to the American people. They have a deductive mind because they're ideologue. So they start with a premise that we're for social justice and for equity of result. And so we're moral, morally superior and smarter than anybody else. And therefore, we are entitled to do things that other people don't do. And so if under the cover of COVID and frightening people about COVID, we can change all the voting laws so that 30% instead of voting absentee and early voting shall become 70% in most states with very little audit. Uh, of the level necessary to authenticate most ballots. They just do all this stuff because they start with the deductive principle. We are better. This is the vision. And therefore, the following must happen. And if things don't fit the narrative, then they go after the person. They censor it. They, they, that's how they work. And if you keep that in mind, then everybody makes sense. And what I'm saying is they go on from one lie to the next. So everybody now knows that Donald Trump, we just discussed it, was impeached for things that Joe Biden got away with. Okay, everybody knows the laptop was authentic. 
Everybody knows that now. Everybody knows that it would have made a big difference on that debate when Donald Trump said it was and Joe Biden said, no, 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 51 authorities. Everybody knew that Dushinko and Charles or whatever his name, Dolan and Christopher Steele were frauds and especially Glenn Simpson and that Hillary Clinton took over an old never Trumper file, inflated it with a million bucks, got the FBI on it to hire Christopher Steele as a consultant informant, hid her so-called legal expenses, and she was fined and cited for that violation through Perkins Coe, Fusion GPS, the NC, and that f- that file was a fraudulent, it was made up. I said that from the first time I saw it, everything in it was false, and yet we wasted 22 months and $40 million to know it was obvious. No apology. In fact, not only no apologies, they got Pulitzer Prize winners, some of the reporters. Every time they give these monstrous lies, there's no apologies. They just, and, they, and why should they? Because in their way, they're just narratives. They're postmodern, Foucauldian, Lacan, Derrida, Narada narratives. They were useful. So that's what they look back. Well, they were useful at the time because when we went through the Mueller investigation, when we went through the laptop, we crippled Donald Trump and therefore we were able to stop him. We had anonymous, anonymous. He was burrowed deep into the Homeland Security. He was a minor official, but we said he was one of the major operatives in the Trump administration. We lied. And then we printed his op-ed because it did what it was supposed to do. It weakened this right-wing agenda, so they think. And we got Admiral McRaven, and he came in and wrote an op-ed and said Trump should leave the sooner the better. And then we got all of the four stars, McCaffrey, McChrystal, all of them, to say that Trump was Hitler, that he was Mussolini, that he was a liar, that he was danger. We got Mark Milley to call the Chinese. We did all of this. And yes, we do not want this to be done to us. If right now a retired four-star general says that Joe Biden is senile or he's dangerous or the Afghanistan is a disaster and he should be removed sooner or later or his weaponization of the DOJ or the FBI is Mussolini-like or his hounding of individual people at school boards or the way he conducted the Mar-a-Lago raid is remnant of it's Nazi-like. And I'm just quoting from what they've said. You know what's going to happen to those people? You're going to get Merrick Garland to call up the Pentagon and they're all going to be slapped with a Code 88 uniform code of military justice and they're going to be court-martialed for disparaging the commander-in-chief trust me they would in two seconds and that's not going to happen first they're not going to say anything because they're not equally going to apply their standards of correct right. behavior on the part of the and second of all they're going to say something with donald trump because they know that that the media and the pentagon are not going to do anything to them. now oh man they would they would destroy them if they ever criticize the commander-in-chief they would go after him like you wouldn't believe, and they know that. And so what we're talking about, I guess, to sum up and end this, they understand deterrence. They are saying to the American people, we are SOBs. We're capable of everything and anything. Now, which side do you want to be on? Because if you're on our side, you can do what Hunter Biden is. There's no consequences. If you want to say that the voting machines are crooked like Jill Stein, go ahead. She did in 2016. If you want to be Barbara Boxer and 32 Democrats and say, you know what? We're not going to certify the Ohio count and hold up the whole election. We're going to try to do that. Don't worry. They got it. They did it in 2004. If you're Al Gore and the registrar and the attorney general says, well, the votes have been counted and they have been certified in Florida. Oh, no, we're going to sue. We're going to sue and hold up the entire election for a month. And so you can do all of that as long as you're on our side. But if you don't do that and you want to go on the other side, then you're going to be in big trouble. And that's that's the message that they're trying to say. That's what we're really getting down to. Join the winning side. It's sort of like in the Soviet Union. If you're part of the nomenclature and you join the party, you're exempt. If you're not, well, you're on your own. People say to me, well, you're an academic and you spent your whole life How did you deal with those 94% of all academics are left wing? And I'm just using that percentage because that's a percentage of those who give money to political campaigns. 94% go to left wing or democratic causes. And and they said, why are they so left wing? Is it they have tenure? 
They're exempt from the worrying about losing their job. They have guaranteed step increases. They have a nine-month work year. 